Morning. Howdy again, YouTube. Welcome back to some more Arcade Spirits. We're still at the beach, and we're gonna go check on a main man, Percy. And we'll see where the rest of this chapter goes. We're gonna play until the chapter ends, so, you know, we'll see how long that goes. Okay. Tao and Percy are playing carny games. Juniper's talking with her Iris, it seems. Let's go, Tao and Percy. A number of little carny style games have been set up along the beach, independent of the boardwalk arcades. Ring tosses, squirt guns, things like that. Oh my gosh. I'm just gonna let you guys sit here with this for a second. Are you, en are you enjoying this? Good. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's return. Percy promised everyone he'd keep it low-key today as he recovers from his heart tremor. Tossing a few rings is definitely low-key. And it looks like even though he's keen to go surfing, Teo's keeping Percy company. But judging from the way those rings are just sort of bouncing off the bottles instead of landing on them, the games are not going well. I don't get it. I'm usually much more coordinated than this. Mm, don't think it's a matter of coordination, Teo. More a question of, well, let's say, optimization. But Pursing Ring goes plink off a bottle as well. <laughs> Carney random. Well, what a shame, what a shame. You boys want to play again? Only another $5 for three tosses. It's a downright steal. Starting to wonder if this is a steal in more sense than one. Hmm. Now, now, nobody likes a sore loser, boys. It's all totally fair, totally fair. Swear on my mom's grave, I do. All this old-timey carny banter's got my dander up. It does. I must confront this charlatan. Hey there, old sport. What kind of racket you trying to pull? What? Cheating my friends? Or, I say, fellas, I believe in you, I do. Let's win one of those spiffy prizes. Horse feathers. Let's leave this dude dropper bee and go have fun on the beach. This one. Hey there, old sport. What kind of racket you trying to pull? What? Cheat my friends? <laughs> I say now, I say, what kind of hokum is this? Don't take any wooden nickels, boys. Me thinks all these hutsy totsy prizes are fool's gold. Pardon me. Pardon? I think it's probably a scam. I take offense to that, I do. Anyone can win. Step right up and be a winner. Or are you yeller? I do believe I have a proposal. Sayo, a word? Hmm? Sure. What do you have in mind? Really, the two huddle up without me and exchange a few whispers. I consider interjecting myself into the discussion, but it's over before I can try. Okay, then. Let's play. Teo passes over a few dollars and takes up the rings, while Percy examines the racks of bottles in detail. Teo holds back, waiting for him to finish. Eventually, Percy points. Right there, three rings, rapid. That's the sweet spot. With a twist of his agile body, Teo flings his rings one at a time, and all three rattle their way around the neck of a bottle, ringing it perfectly. Simple enough, based on Teo's throwing angles from before and the arrangement of the bottles, I determine the optimal striking zone for him to aim for. All games are a matter of optimization, even silly little carnival toys. Melons! You've bested me, old sport. Well, I know when I'm well and truly rumbled. Go ahead and pick your prize. Well, price? What'll it be? Yeah, we are trying to win you a prize after all. Everyone's in love with me and I don't know how to handle that. I don't. Me? Really? This was all for me? <laughs> Choose the crotch. Absolutely. You know it. I mean, you are the true prize here. Back me up on this, Percy. Quite so. Quite so. But which one of these lesser winnings truly makes your heart dance? Whew. I glance across rows of arcade-themed stuffed dolls with curiosity. I'd say I'm a little old for dolls, but you're never too old for a huggable plush friend. And they both worked so hard for it. I'd like... That adorable Mr. Movie Magic plushie. That swinging dolly that plays music. I guess I'll just have a Q-Bert. Obviously Mr. Boopy. I like to put on my robe and wizard hat. 
Also, I want Mr. Ro Moopy. <laughs> Anna! <laughs> Who did this? Who did this? Was it Two Flower or Anna? I put on my robe and wizard hat. Who do you think you are? That's classic internet. My gosh, I gotta go hunt that down. Holy crap. Classic. Cheese Louise. Two Flower. You monster. You absolute beast of a legend. Truly, Price is an individual of class and taste. I suppose nothing beats the classics, huh? Plus, I can't deny the happy little smile Percy wears as the carny takes down my prize and hands it over. He's had a hard time of it lately. I'm happy to make him happy. Okay, okay, now go away, boys, you bother me. <laughs> the three of us return to the dunes, prize in tow. So, why were you trying to win a prize for me? I mean, Percy, there was a Moopy doll back there. That's like right in your wheelhouse, yeah? True, true, but, well... We discussed it and decided you deserved a treat for a job well done. Sure, this whole vacation is a treat for a job well done, but we wanted something for you specifically. Quite right. I must admit, Price, the Funplex is a brighter place with you around. Not to say it wasn't a bright place before your tenure, but, well, there's a true breath of life there, beyond what I thought possible. And, be, uh, let's see. And beyond just the hard work you do. The way you've brought us all together, well, a mere plush toy isn't really proper reward, but it'll have to suffice. What my comrade is trying to say in his usual poetic way is, you rock and you rule, so you get a prize. Thanks for playing. Yes, that. Is his thumb in his speedo? We can check. Could be. It could, like he could have. He could. He could be. He could be doing that. He could be doing that. Besides, I just can't resist taking any opportunity to see that lovely smile of yours. Teo! My goodness. Okay, I'm gonna go hit the waves. I'd offer you a board, Percy, but... I know, I know. I promise to take it easy. Not that I'm very aquatic, to be honest. Fry! More to the point is your thumb in his speedo. My goodness. There it is! Escondolo! But it's good time to spend or it's good to spend time with you, considering you're usually we're on the opposite ends of the arcade. You too. Well? Wow. I didn't realize just how much I meant to them. I'm only a floor attender an event manager, right? Jazzy! Oh my, I just walked into a banana hammock time. Yup! Things got real spicy on the beach episode, Jazz. But seeing everybody come together for this beach blanket bingo we wrangled up? It's the bee's knees. It is. Speaking of bees, the noon sun's high in the sky, and honestly, it's getting super hot out here. Like, heat exhaustion levels of hot. Well, this would be a good time to migrate towards the boardwalk. It seems there's one more thing in store for our little group. Alas, the queen of the beach is exhausted from being too awesome for words, and is seriously considering hanging up this bikini for a bit. I don't think this is a nude beach. Oh, if only. But seriously, I'd love to go hit the boardwalk for a bit. But Naomi's got some kind of surprise lined up for us over yonder. Oh, little Miss Demi, you put out a purple banana. I always love those purple bananas. Those are great. Really? Okay. Uh, be there in a minute. I wonder what this is all about. Purple bananas for everyone. The mayor says purple bananas are the best emotes because they show you how happy they are just by looking at them. They're so happy they can't breathe and that's why they turn purple. Percy's in-game voice should have been the mayor. I don't think that would have worked if Percy was like, Oh, hello there, love. I'm a, I'm a charming British man and I came uh, to, to be the best at Moopy. I'm the Moopy boy. That's how it works. Soon enough, the entire group is gathered. The number of shade-throwing parasols has multiplied to four. Too plenty of cool respite for everyone. Also new, a large cloth wrap bundle in the center of the group. Gather round, gather round. It's lunchtime! And judging from the rumbling in my stomach, it's right on time. 
The bundle is unwrapped, revealing a series of simple wooden lunchboxes in a traditional Japanese style. Each one's been painted a different color. Aw, cute! As a way of saying thanks for all your hard work and your support, please enjoy these box lunches, courtesy of the Funplex. And me. I made them. An authentic Naomi bread bento? Uh, sign me up. I reach for a box, and she smacks my hand away! <gasps> no! Not yet, Price. I made these special like... Everybody has a personalized lunch filled with their favorite things. Gavin, if you'd be kind enough to distribute them, names are written on the lids. Sure enough, on second glance, I can see the names, and even little cartoon doodles representing each person. Wow, does my face really look that apathetic? Thanks. Okay, I'll start handing them out. Gavin, you first. Let's see. Impressive. <laughs> Plain yogurt, celery sticks, and some rice. You know me quite well. Boring and nutritional. I colored a bit outside the lines on this one. Rather than sticking to a traditional bento style, enjoy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, sushi with soup so with some tempura veggies. Oh, and a side of miso soup. I love nothing more than a traditional bento box lunch. And I love mo nothing more than making them. Huh, fish and chips, of course. With a little union jack on a toothpick. And you made a moopy mose out of the chips, too. Oh, it's not too stereotypical, is it? Quite good. I haven't found a proper chip shop stateside, so I'll take it. A nice little taste at home. Fantastic. Oh, yeah! A big juicy cheeseburger and french fries. My mouth is watering just looking at it. Yum! And it got lots of pink in it. Just how you like it. So pink I can hear it moo. This is perfect! Pita bread and hummus. Love it. It's a great meal that fills the belly and gives you ton of energy. Nah, what? I didn't what? I didn't do what? What? And we have to keep your tank at full. A tired Teo is not a true Teo. Oh, how marvelous. Oh my, this is lovely. Little finger sandwiches, some tea, and even a cupcake. <laughs> Thank you, Naomi dear. It's very thoughtful. Aw, thanks, Miss Francine. Family channel. Nat, what? Look, sometimes things get a little PG-13 around here, okay? I got a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Nice. <laughs> Bet you consulted with Price on this one. I love these. Always have, always will. Actually, I just checked your Instagram. I did an analysis of your most commonly blogged food and can't talk busy eating. <laughs> and that leaves the one who brought us all together. Price. For you, I made pizza bagels. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding, it's actually similar to the bento I gave you the day you started at the Funplex. A little reminder of how this all started. Oh, oh well, thank you. Pizza facts! <laughs> speech! Speech! What? Yeah! You should make a speech before we all dig in. I mean, you're the reason we're here. I am? Yeah, you are. I mean, we were doing a great before you showed up, but don't get me wrong, but you know... But you worked harder than any of us to make the Funplex a success it is today. I was content to keep it afloat. I didn't think we'd ever manage more than that. But you refused to be content. We wouldn't be here at this beach if not for the success you led us to, Bryce. So yeah, I think a speech would be appropriate. Hell yeah! Buttmania 20XX rocked! It really opened some doors for me. I'd still be wearing that damn black L7 jacket if not for you. The atmosphere is so much lively. Oh, <clears throat> I thought it was still her. The atmosphere is so much livelier thanks to your efforts. Win or lose, I'm enjoying my time with Moopy thanks to having so many great people around me. By this point, I can't even imagine the Funplex without you, Price. Just don't even think of leaving. If you do, we'll probably gather up a hunting party and drag you back. No hard feelings. And, speaking as the one price comes home to every night, I gotta say, they're doing dandy compared to before. So, three cheers for the Funplex! Three cheers indeed! Go ahead, Price, you've earned the right for a speech. I'm just the silly old lady who started it. You made this happen. Wow. Uh, seriously. Wow. Um, well, I've made big speeches before, like the one at Buttmania 20XX. Even if this feels bigger. Way bigger. Okay, here goes. It can't be milk toast for this toast. It's big feelings or nothing. The Funplex rules! It's exactly what I needed in my life. Thank you all. Being here with you has helped me through hard times in my life. 
Let's get hype, bros. I gotta be honest. Life sucked and sucked bad before I found you wacky people. Juniper knows what I'm talking about. My life had become a series of unfortunate events. And then, well, I found the Funplex. Don't think I'm the reason why the Funplex rules. It ruled before I got there. All I did was help you all see it the way I see it. Together, we make one kick-ass arcade juggernaut. And I'm looking forward to seeing where the beast goes next. Woohoo! Go Price! Go Funplex! Go us! Okay, good. On a roll. Let's see, what to say next? Oh, that's so cute! This one, absolutely. Long ago, Flotsam Beach was a home away from home for my family. We'd rent a house on the dunes and just relax for a solid week. Play board games, read books, go out and have a swim, or cruise the boardwalk arcades. It's a place that can be anything you need it to be. Quiet solace, sure. Loud and exciting fun, absolutely. I can't think of a better place for us to celebrate what we've accomplished together. Even if we're only here a day, we'll make the most of it. Indeed. Fine times with fine folk in a fine place, it's just a ticket. I propose we return here every year, if our good fortunes continue. Now to bring it on home. Okay, let's kick some ass. Okay, okay, I've talked your ears off, we've got half a day left, and a lot of ass to kick, so let's eat up and get back to the fun! Heckin' yeah! This is so cool! Going to Flotsam with you, Price, and all your great friends, and this great food, and it's all so great! Let's eat everyone! Not let's eat everyone, but let's eat, comma, everyone! This is the moment. One perfect moment with all of us together. Laughing and talking and eating and having the best time in the world. Maybe things will change after tonight, when Iris' plan to find me romance comes together. Maybe this is the high watermark. Maybe. But no matter what happens, I'll always have this one perfect moment. Afternoon slides in as the gang migrates from sandy shores to bustling boardwalk. Once you've had your fill of seaweed in your trousers, it's time to take a walk down the boardwalk and indulge in any number of side activities. No need to change out your swim gear either. Unless you're going deeper into the beach town, you can just skip back and forth between the sands and the boardwalk. This is where the real action happens. Shops, restaurants, and of course, arcades. Soon enough, the group's splitting up to go try and do as much as possible. I've got time to tag along with some of them. Hmm, who to hang out with? I mean... I mean... Of course! Sitting on some benches just outside a fried dough stand, Percy and Queen Bee are sharing a funnel cake dusted with white sugar. Seriously? You've never had this stuff before? Not much carnage chow in England, I'm afraid. And this is my first time visiting a beach in the colonies. Wait, you can eat this, right? I mean, it's basically fried grease and sugar. Your heart won't explode. It's not an issue of artery congestion. And Lord knows I eat plenty of instant ramen fast food. One little sugary treat won't be the tipping point. Oh, hey, Price, join us. No way we can eat this huge thing by ourselves. I settle in to pick up the delicious fried dough, just like I used to have back when we came here regularly. So, Percy and I were talking shop. And even if you aren't a pro gamer, maybe you've got some valuable input, you know? See, our moopy holic buddy here doesn't believe in being a full-time professional gamer. Don't think so. It's not that I don't believe in it. I just don't see it as a stable occupation for a young person to undertake. If you're entirely reliant on the wavering loyalty of corporate sponsors and streaming subscribers, alongside any prize money you may or may not be winning, well... I suppose I'm just too risk-averse to walk that path. I prefer a sound investment. Whereas I love risk. No risk, no reward. Yeah, at any moment it could all come crashing down and I end up living in my parents' basement again. But I love to fight for my future. <laughs> Just like Price. They were an unemployed bum before finding the funplex, so nowhere to go but up. You know. It's not like I was living under a bridge. Opportunity knocked, and I answered. I didn't actually plan any of this. Um, uh, yeah. Opportunity knocked, and I answered. Opportunity for work presented itself. I took it. It's a simple equation, really. A job's a job. The funplex is a fun job, but it's still a job. Right, but it's also a risky one. That's what I'm getting at. 
It's gainful employment in the end, but the only reason you aren't still eating pizza bagels is because you voluntarily took risks and made them pay for you. I'm still eating pizza bagels. I'm not saying my path's for everyone, abandoning the safer road in favor of the wild ride. It takes a certain mindset to make that work. But I promise you that those of us willing to make that leap are having a more rewarding life as a result. Satisfying, not rewarding. Being a school teacher is satisfying, but sadly, society does not reward it its due. Many satisfying paths in life are also fraught with disaster due to this. It's survivorship bias. People see rock stars and football heroes and think they can make it big too. But those success stories are a percent of a percent of a percent. And what happens later in life to the sports hero who abandoned all of the paths? What skills you fall back on when your window closes? You've succeeded so far, Queen Bee. But remember not too long ago, you were terrified of being drummed out of your team and tossed on the street. I wouldn't say wow. terrified. It's more like a mild reluctance at best. The real two flower, indeed, the real. Couldn't you pursue dominance in your game of choice without making it your entire existence? I don't really play Moopy all day. I trade stock in my off hours. Why not consider a day job with your gameplay occupying the remaining no. hours? No way. No how. Fism discomfort takes absolute dedication. I can't be at the top of my game at the top of THE game if I'm also flipping burgers or filing paperwork. Percy, competitive level play requires intensive training. Y you can't get around the time investment, but you can make it pay double. That's where streaming comes in. Whenever I'm training, I'm streaming. Subs and donations make me money while my skills go up, up, up. It's win-win. I suppose I can see the need for time investment, yes. But it's not like streaming revenues are stable either. Hmm. Perhaps price can help settle this question. What do you think? Is it better to wholly devote your life to a risky proposition in search of happiness? Or to hedge your bets and find balance? Uh... Well... As someone who was in graduate school and then decided to not do that and then be a professional video game player all the time, I think I can speak to this one. Totally worth it, let's do it! I think Queen Bee's right. If you want to really devote yourself to something, no matter the risk, you have to go all in. Percy, you're still young, you know? You've got time to do something wild and crazy. Make it happen. If I had time, I suppose. Aw, oh, man. Sorry, Purper, I didn't mean to imply. No, no, it's quite all right. Both of you. I see where you're coming from. In your situation, taking chances for a brighter future, I suppose you're braver than I. And that's admirable. Exactly! Go for the gold! With the four heavenly kings behind me and the funplex keeping me going, I'm headed for the top. Risky? Yeah, this is what I mean. Or, this is what I want. I choose this. Yeah, Percy, you've got time to move back to England and marry that Fry guy. Whoever he is, says Fry DX. Fry? Hmm? Hmm? I think you mean chips guy. He wants, he wants better chips. I don't know what you could be talking about. And we'll be right here, every step of the way. With the neglected funnel cake cooling off, the three of us focus on putting away our sugary rewards after that. We're each walking different paths, but I can't say any of us are willing to settle for anything less than our dreams in the long run. Hmm, who to hang out with? Gavin and Ashley are checking out the arcade. Naomi and Teo are raiding a candy store. Juniper and Francine are shopping for souvenirs. The primary appeal of this place for me was always the arcades. I rarely swam in the ocean. I preferred indoor swimming pools to unpredictable waves. That meant boardwalk crawls, arcade games, tokens, and joysticks. Although as I approach one of these open-air arcades, well, I don't see a single joystick. Impressive. Interesting. I'd hazard these arcades are 100% redemption games. I suppose it's for the best Naomi's distracted by looking for saltwater taffy. She'd hate this place. I've noticed this industry trend away from anything vaguely resembling a traditional arcade game and towards touch screens and prize tickets. I suppose it was inevitable. If not for a strong showing for joysticks through the 80s and 90s, it would have happened sooner. A game's a game, you know? I can enjoy just about anything. Oh, and hey, there's pinball! You like pinball, right, Gavin? Ooh, and skee-ball! I love alley rollers. What? Huh? Technically, skee-ball TM, depending on spelling and hyphenation, is a registered trademark. These are simply alley rollers, manufactured by a different company. 
Sheesh. Way to suck the fun out of it. Koala Wings looks at Gavin and Teo. You sure they aren't joysticks? Escondolo. Ah, apologies for my innate killjoy nature. Allow me to make it up to you by actually having some fun. Is that even possible? Will your ultra cool guy exterior allow your inner softy to be exposed? If you'll let me finish, how about a sk alley roller contest? Each of us gets five tokens to score the most points. Whoever wins buys the other ice cream. Now we're talking. Hey, Price, want to join in? Make this a three-way dance. Maybe all the joysticks are gone. But I'm certainly a longtime ski ball fanatic. I'd likely clean the floor with these two. Still. I'm a ski ball wizard. I got this. You're going to get it now. You take a shot at the ski ball TM wizard. You best not miss. That's a spirit. I can smell that victory ice cream already. And it smells like victory. Our coins rattle into the slot, tinking along the metal chute. Five tokens. Highest cumulative score wins. I suppose if it's three players, the two losers split the cost of the ice cream. Two flower. I see prices respecting it to gutsy. It seems strong in this meta. <laughs> I remember playing tons of alley rollers back when I was a kid, roaming up and down the boardwalks of Flotsam Beach. Like riding a bike. Those are physical skills you never really forget. My grip on the gnarly old wooden ball feels completely natural, even now. We drop in our tokens and line up, our, uh, line up for our first throws. It takes a few rolls for me to find my sweet spot. But eventually, I'm right where I need to be in the scores. Which, unfortunately, can't be said of my co-workers. Two flower, fun fact, I sampled this audio off of my own skee ball machine, which is literally in my apartment. I bought one. Two flower, that's awesome. That is awesome. When I was a kid, we had a, um, we, st as we still have actually, it's in the house. I should go take pictures of it at some point. Um, a uh, pinball machine um, that my, uh, was my grandmother's. Like it's like, it's like from the twenties or thirties. It's like super old, maybe the forties. It's super old though. Um, and we eventually got it up and running. So fun, so fun. Oh, come on, I totally should have landed that one, Hundo. Rather disappointing. These machines are a bit beat up from exposure and play. I wouldn't be surprised if they're unbalanced. Moving that thing when I moved home was an adventure. Oh, I bet, I bet. Or they're rigged, like those Carney games Teo and Percy were playing earlier. But they aren't? I'm hitting my shots, no problem. Hmm, I could whisper some advice to one of them. Maybe give them an edge? It's cheating, sure, but we're all getting ice cream in the end, so who cares? Psst, Ashley, here's the trick. I lean in next to Ashley and whisper her a hot tip. Aim for the 40-pointer with every throw. That way you'll always net a consistent amount of mid-tier points. Oh. Instead of wildly aiming for the honeypot of 100 points, Ashley lines up for a shot right down the middle and scores a sweet throw. Price is a filthy cheater! No, Two Flower! No! Just giving tips. I didn't cheat. Soon enough, the game is over with Ashley just barely pushing past my score and Gavin far behind. What? Ashley beat me. How, what have I done? Ah, well, I gave it my best. It makes you feel better. I couldn't have won without Price's solid advice. No, you still were the one making the throws. That's skill, even if they offered suggestions. Still, if you'd like to keep things fair, let's put the ice cream cost three ways. Everyone's a winner. Hot. Tips, eh? Tess! Tess Escondolo! Don't know what you could be talking about. Indeed. Most importantly, we had fun. Arcades are meant to be places where friends can gather and have fun playing with each other. Beachside or in a shopping plaza with or without joysticks. That's our goal. Let's take back a lesson today that we should always endeavor to provide fun. First and foremost, whatever shape it takes, that is our mission. <laughs> Still found a way to turn this into a working vacation, huh? But an enjoyable one. <laughs> People in chat, maybe Ashley's the side piece. Two flower, maybe she's the slam piece? A side piece that operates at supersonic speeds. What? You talking about slammers? Are you talking about pogs? What are you talking about? We grab ice cream cones from a vendor on the boardwalk, swapping work stories, laughing, and having a blast. This is probably the happiest I've seen Gavin. At work, he's all business, but here, he can crack a smile. 
even as he's analyzing arcades. And Ashley just exudes sunshine and cheer everywhere she goes. She's a good influence on him, clearly. But time's ticking, and I've got other stops to make. It feels good being out and about with everyone, away from the funplex, away from work. Just friends, having a great time, and a place designed for great times. With our newfound success, I hope we can do this more often. Hmm, who to hang out with? Stinks Fry Dogs and Yoshi's Pizza, the only pizza within two miles. That's a good thing to have. Definitely not a game reference. Yoshi's Pizza, definitely not a game reference, is what that says. My dad thought Pogs had to deal with drugs. What? <laughs> That's hilarious. Naomi and Teo are raiding a candy store! Out of the corner of my eye, I see Teo and Naomi sneaking into one of the shops on the boardwalk called The Sandy Bar, with little iconic saltwater taffy icons on each side. Two flower, is that a weed? I'm calling it the police. Ah, saltwater taffy. A staple of coastal life and commerce. On any given boardwalk, you're within spitting distance of at least three candy shops loaded with tasty treats. But more importantly, why are these two acting so childish about the whole thing? Like two kids in a candy store. Oh. I need to find out exactly what's going on. And more importantly, I need to see if they have any of those gummy sharks in there, too. Gummy shark two two to two. Sorry. Um, as I peer into the building, my senses are overwhelmed by sweet. My teeth practically hurt from all the surrounding sugar. Covering the walls are assorted containers holding various types of candies, a rainbow of colors and confectionaries, filled to the brim with saltwater taffy and covered in chocolates. Price, no! Bad! Why you do these? <laughs> I know I got- I know some of y'all now is just stuck in your head, it won't go out. Filled to the brim with saltwater taffy and covered in chocolates. Not only do I take note of the delectable candy, but I also notice all the kitties running around. I can't help but be reminded of the funplex. Same atmosphere, just less games. Why you do this? How dare you? I do it because I love, Nat. I do it for your own good. Okay? I do it for you. For you. I look over to the person behind the counter and give them a nod of understanding. I feel you, noble cashier, in your quest to maintain peace and order. Lies. It's the truths. It is the truths. But the crunches are better. Maybe later. Naomi and Teo recognize me and wave me over. Over here, Price. Come help us decide on what to get. I comply and go over toward them. Naomi is huddled over a table. It's filling her eyes with various desserts. I'm just like imagining her like Gollum. Just like, I want one of these and two of these. Oh, and a handful of this one. Oh, oh, what's that over there? Wow. <gasps> Candied apples. I have to get one of those too. Crunch. Naomi is just too much right now. Every time her eyes light up at seeing a new candy, it turns my heart to mush. A mushy, mushy mess of emotions. This is the best part about going to the beach. Look at how many different candies there are. I could just devour them all. Naomi is like me in a candy store, Demi. <laughs> now, I pegged Naomi as having a sweet tooth, but Teo, with all this dancing? I would have guessed him to stick to a healthier diet. But this trip is a vacation for all of us, so maybe he's spoiling himself? So, what do you think of the place? Who, me? Oh, I, I've been here before, like quite a few times. It's the most popular, the uh, most popular, the most popular candy store on the boardwalk. My family and I would always stop by right before a long drive home. Don't read into that. After a long day of swimming, walking in front of the sun, a maximum sugar overdrive was a perfect way to end the day. They'd give me a fistful of dollars and cut me loose in here. Whoa. Whoa, they just let you get whatever you wanted? Dang, wish I had your parents. Cute! I could just see a young Price here running around and stuffing uh, candy into their face. Not gonna lie, I was a cute kid. Not so cute when overdosing on sweets, though. Both Naomi and Teo laugh heartily. Look at Teo's face. Look at that. That's hilarious. I mean, they didn't exactly give me Fort Knox to blow on snacks, but it was still a nice little reward at the end of the day. Bye, Nat! Bye. Who's, is Nat leaving? Guess I have to go make foods. Okay, bye. Love you, bye. Bye. Have fun playing this when you play it. Bye. As I am a creature of habit, I'd always get saltwater taffy year after year. It's just the best feeling, munching on taffy while watching the waves crash on the sand. Naomi suddenly gasps, <gasps> interrupted by my recollection. What is it, Naomi? 
They have Compeito. I don't know what that is. Compeito? Compeito? Did I say it right? I'm still confused. Is that a good thing? It's the best thing! They're these little traditional Japanese sugar candies that look like stars and are my absolute favorite! Every time my mother would go to visit family in Japan, she'd bring me back some. But it's been years since I last had some. She squeals excitedly and runs over to the little stand that has a cute assortment of pastel sugar stars. We follow suit and make our way next to Naomi. Teo picks up a bag and brings it closer to his face, examining them. Okay, these are quite possibly the cutest candies I've ever seen. Sweet! And they are so sweet. Ah, oh, Naomi, nothing is sweeter than you. And that's a fact. <laughs> that's oh. not... That's not entirely true. I have to agree with Teo. No one has brought me more impromptu lunches at work than you do. Thank you. But these candies are still the sweetest. Teomi! Teo! Teomi! Teomi is real! Teo Heart Naomi is real, guys! This is not a drill. Teomi, get on board with it because it's happening right before our very eyes. You both should taste these, by the way. I just know you'll love them as much as I do. Teo and I agree with the nod of our heads and Naomi turns around happily with an armful of candy and treats. Like a dragon with her horde, she heads toward the register when a kid runs smack into her. <gasps> In a colorful explosion, candy spills everywhere and Naomi falls over backward. I instinctively go in to help Naomi up, but out of the corner of my eye, I see the kid who bumped into her, swiping candies off the floor and pocketing them. Hey! It's a classic move. We see it all the time with tickets and tokens at the Funplex. And like the arcade, this is no different. It's so overused. Teo even sees it. He elbows me and points it out to my attention. This is not my store. Not my job. Do I step in or let it slide? Pick up the mess or point out the thief? Hmm. I mean, screw that kid. Gutsy, go for it. All right, let's do it. Get out of here, kid. I know it's not my job, but if some brat did that in the funplex and I didn't notice, I would want someone to do something about it. Plus, stealing candy is the worst possible crime one could commit. Save for like murder or Grand Theft Auto or whatever. Okay, so there are a lot more awful crimes, but this one takes the cake, so to speak. Hey, kid, turn out your pockets. <laughs> What do you want? I ain't doing nothing. I saw you stuff all those candies in your pockets. Look at them bulging out. You aren't tricking anyone. The kid looks like they want to say something, but by now the cashier is here too, and the kid turns out his pockets. There's a lot more in there than just what they got from the spill. With more tact than I could probably muster, the cashier tells him to kindly exit the sandy bar, and the kid complies. The cashier and I exchange knowing glances. We are one in the same. Well, after that excitement, I'm ready to relax on the beach and eat some of this candy. Me too. Me three? But I can't quite leave yet. There's still one more thing I must do. I need to get some saltwater taffy. It's a piggy family boardwalk tradition after all. Oh yeah, we can't break tradition. Although if we do, I wouldn't mind starting a new Funplex Beach tradition with you. Teo! Please, this is one important delicious decision Price has to make. And the only correct answer would be for him to choose the cotton candy ones. Cotton candy flavored taffy? Really? I wouldn't joke about something as serious as this. But it's like sickeningly sweet. Even I can't handle it. And I can handle a truckload of sweet. Well, what would you choose then? <laughs> I have squid hat. Break tradition. It causes bad luck. Family bad luck. It's bad luck in the family. We know all about it. Buttered popcorn, obviously. Gross! Gross! Butter popcorn flavor is the worst flavor for candy! What are you doing? I like a little salty with my sweet. Teo, quit it! Making everything about something else. But, but that's sacrilege. I am much more of a purist. Getting in a fight over flavors isn't necessary. Both are great flavors and I already know what I'm going home with. Lies! Lies! What's that price? Cotton candy, butter popcorn, grab bag. Sweeter the better, and cotton candy is on the top of that list. I agree with Naomi. Cotton candy is my favorite, too. Those are both terrible flavors. They are pretty bad, but also, uh, I'm going to be real, saltwater taffy's gross. 
I went there, but saltwater taffy, it's just kind of like, um, just give me other candy. Give me the combato or whatever. Like, I want that. The end. Um, hooray! Heathens, both of you. But of course, that just means more buttered popcorn taffy for me. I think that about covers it. Shall we blow this popsicle stand? Oh, they have popsicles too? Once again, Naomi's got her arms filled to the brim with candy, and she nods enthusiastically. Teo's picked out some of his favorites too. We each take our turns in line, and before we know it, we are happily carrying our stash with us onto the boardwalk. Oh, I almost forgot. She stops abruptly, digs through her bag for a moment, and pulls out the competo. Yes, I've been wanting one since you pointed them out. Naomi opens the bag, and both Teo and I pick one out, popping the sugar star in our mouths, both of us smile wide, enjoying its sugary goodness. Love it. Oh, that is so yummy. For real, Naomi, it's my new favorite candy. It's very good. I mean, next time I'm at the Sandy Bar, I'll get some of these instead of Taffy. Next time I'm here, because with the Funplex riding high in the world, I bet we can afford it next time. And another. And another. Demi. I mean, I can't trust Price after his stance on salty licorice. Because it's gross! Because it's gross, Demi. Get that out of here. Y'all are crazy over there with your licorice and your salt on it. Thank you for introducing me to a whole new world of flavor, Naomi. Anytime, Teo. Maybe if I can change your mind on candy, I convince you to dance a little lighter on Showtime stage. It's a delicate cabinet. But then I wouldn't get to see you as much on the Funplex floor. Teomi is real! Teomi is real, y'all! Very true. I've got my candy haul, so my work here is done. I got places to be. And I want to spend some time taking in the sea breeze. Catch you later. I need to clear my senses of sugar, too. We'll catch up with you later, Price. Once alone, I open my bag of saltwater taffy, pick one out, and eat it. I let the taste fully consume me. Now, this is a perfect vacation. We didn't get to go see, um... Uh, Juniper. The rest of the afternoon passes in a blur. Soon the sun has gone down and Flatsa Beach is a calmer place. A more chill vibe as the day's manic energy is long since spent. It's also clear the group will be breaking up soon. They've already changed back into their regular clothes. Done with the beach as a whole. Some are talking about checking out the nightlife scene around here. Some just want to relax in their hotel rooms. Some are simply heading back to the city. Leaving me alone for a moment with my thoughts. It's been a wonderful day. Definitely. There's only one thing that couldn't prove it. A risk? A daydream. But maybe one worth taking? I happen to know a few things about dreams lately. Beep beep, Price. Yeah, I know. I'm going to ask someone on a date. Only if you want to. I know I was kind of pushy earlier. I'm sorry, but if you want this, now is the moment. Everything in my calculation says that it's the perfect time. I've got a lot going for me, but maybe something's still missing. Something more that I need from life than the warmth of friendship alone. More importantly, maybe one of them feels the same way? Maybe they feel the same yearning. Romance, love. I'm no stranger to these things, but... Those were fumbling first attempts in youth. I could fumble again. Am I ready for this? I... Well, I'm still considering. Hmm. How about I run down the data while you're thinking? Let's see. Okay, after my analysis, here's where you stand with everybody and how your personality is shaping up. But now that I've had weeks to understand you better, I think I can adjust these values based on what I know each of them likes in a partner. Naomi loves people who are kind-hearted, but has a bit of a fiery temper. You match both of these. Gavin may be blunt, but he aspires to be kind, and you're already kindly. Ashley goes with her gut, and so do you. Gutsy clicks for both of you. Queen Bee takes risks and relishes in a challenge. You're both very gutsy. Percy's heart is wide open to the world, as is your own. You are both very kindly. And that's everybody. In my final analysis, I think you are the best possible match for... Queen Bee... Ashley, and Naomi. All three would make a fine companion for you, Price. Queen Bee, Ashley, and Naomi all get along well with you and match your personality. So, Queen Bee, Ashley, and Naomi? My sources say yes. Yes, I calculate you'll have the best probability of success with them. Numbers. All based on numbers. High score. OK, 
Okay, let's run with it. I've come this far, and I trust Data. It's crazy, but you know what? My life is crazy. It's surfing a deep wave of crazy. All the way to the shore is crazy. So, okay. Hook me up with someone whose numbers match my numbers. I'm ready to go. Let's do a quick little one of these. Great, but I want to make sure you understand what's really going on here. I have to see the world through numbers. I see relationships as numbers. I see your vocal tones as numbers. And I score it all. But the math is less important than the meaning. I see a number. But that number represents your free will and your heart. You chose to spend time with them. You shared good times with smiles and laughter and sometimes even tears. This isn't like a dating website. You aren't asking a total stranger out just because the numbers match. You need to switch the causal relationship around. I need to ask for a casual relationship? Causal. As oh. in the cause of. You aren't spending time with them because of the numbers. The numbers exist because you wanted to spend time with them. Correlation is not causation. You've been building these relationships for months. Now, you can take one to the next level. The numbers can be your guide if you let them. But, follow your heart. Above all else, follow your heart. Okay. Got it. Right. So let's not limit ourselves here. Of all those who are special to you, which one do you want to share your heart with? Here it goes, y'all. Here it goes. Cliffhanger! No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, that would be funny, though, wouldn't it? Uh, it's a big decision. But she's right. She's been watching me, listening to me, understanding me. But in the end, it's my choice. And their choice to accept my love or not. Ben, you say I wouldn't dare. You know I would. You know I'd dare. For the lulls. For the lulls, bro. But which one do I love? Which one should I approach? Come on. Come on. We all know. It's been this way from day one. You think that I wouldn't go with the queen? The queen? My goodness. My goodness. Cliffhanger, says Anna. Cliffhanger! <laughs> the queen! The queen! Queen Bee! Uh, just saying her name fills me with excitement. A romance with Queen Bee would be a whirlwind of passion. Her assertive nature and her sassy flair really energize me. I want to be the person who Queen Bee looks to by her side, cheering her into victory, comforting her when she's defeated. I'm ready to sign in the dotted line for Queen Bee's contract of love. I like your enthusiasm, Price. I know that if you're true to yourself, everything will work out for the best. At least, that's what I've learned from all of your human love stories. Hmm, note to self. See if anybody's written some good app finds app love stories. <gasps> Can that be an, an Arcade Spirits uh, side game, please, Enna, Two Flower? A uh, little, uh, a mobile game where you have an iris and you try and find the love for iris. I better message you after this. Oh, snap. Thanks, Iris. I I'm about to go. Hopefully. Succeed at my own human love story. Wish me luck. Iris waves bye to me as she shuts herself off, leaving me alone with my thoughts. The thrill of getting to ask Queen Bee on a date took over, and I could feel myself starting to get nervous. She's a local and internet celeb. Way out of my league. What if I'm not cool enough? Last time I checked, I was lukewarm at best on the cool scale. There is no way I'm anywhere as popular, attractive, intelligent, magnificent, perfect. And as I struggle, look at her new jacket! With the thought of how unsuitable I am, the gaming goddess herself approaches me out of nowhere. With a frown, she pockets her phone, then shakes her dour mood free as she turns to face me. Hey, kid. Oh, hey, Queen Bee. <laughs> what a pleasant surprise to see you here, standing next to me on the boardwalk, being all normal like. <laughs> totally normal price, right here, normal dude, super normal. Yeah, that tends to happen when you and all your friends go on holiday together. Anyway, I'm getting straight to the point because I don't like beating around the bush, and I'm not a fan of sappy, fluffy bull. 
just blunt honesty. So do you want to join me on a date tonight? Oh my. Yes, yes, a thousand times yes. I instantly blush from head to toe. Here I thought I was going to have to muster up enough bravery to ask Queen Bee out. And bam, she intercepts me and asks me herself. Don't get too excited there, kid. I was going to go out with some friends of mine who live nearby, do an evening meetup in Flotsam, but... Queen Bee looks away, frowning well, at the ground. they bailed on me. Hardcore lame-ass style. Oh, cool. I'm We'd arranged second everything choice. a few days in advance, and now they aren't even returning my text. I swear, cool. if those ladies aren't literally on fire or saving orphans from a building that is literally on fire, I'm having some harsh words with them later. Long and short of it is, nobody wants to just go out and have some fun. And I need cheering up. Pronto. Cheer me up, okay? Mission accepted. I'm sorry, Queen B. That really sucks. But you know what? What? Fuck them. There we go. No one should ever deny Queen B what she wants. Do they not understand how amazing she is? You don't deserve this. Fuck that. You know what? They don't deserve you. I said the word. I said the word. Wow. You're cute when you're petty and vindictive, kid. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, you're right. If they don't want to hit the town with me and have a good time, I'd rather do that with you anyway. I mean, do they not know who you are? You are the Queen Bee. They should be honored that you even choose to grace them with your presence. Ha! <laughs> if only it's that easy. My non-gamer friends don't feel the same way as the rest of the FOD scene. Non-gamer friends? Does not compute. Right? It's so hard to find people these days that don't play games, but let me tell you, they do exist. Case in point, my two best lady friends. We've been friends since we were little tiny babies. Our mothers are all friends, so when we were born, we all became friends by proxy. I grew up with both of these ladies. We've shared so much together over the years. We still all go on mother-daughter outings occasionally. It's, it's complicated. But compared to them, I've always been the weird one. The loser, if you will. Both of them have successful career paths. One's a teacher, the other a psychologist. Heck, they've had kids uh. already. And what do I have to show? I play arcade games for a living. I bet they think I'm wasting my time and energy. It's probably why those friends ditch me tonight. I'm so unaccomplished. Hey, that's not being fair to yourself, Queen Bee. You're one of the four heavenly kings now. Did you forget? That's like the most accomplished thing I can think of. Except if you made Fist of Discomfort itself, then just maybe you'd be more accomplished. You know how to make a woman feel special. Anyway, I'm done being sad about this. I refuse to let a little trifle like this get me down any further. So let's go out and have a f***ing great time. Yeah. Agreed. Let's go. Wait, where exactly are we going? Somewhere fancy as hell. I'm a classy ass lady and I have classy ass needs. First off, drinks and food. Second, dancing. Third, a romantic stroll on the beach. That all sounds... Perfect, actually. I just don't know of any classy-ass places here in Flotsam. Since we were more of a burgers family than a filet mignon family, whenever we came to the beach, we stayed mostly to the cheap eats. Lots of diners, drive-ins, and hot dog stands. I couldn't tell you what kind of fancy places exist here, if any. As I tried to pick my brain of somewhere befitting of Queen Bee's taste, she takes the initiative once again. She pulls out her phone and starts looking up the local eateries. Hmm, not a lot of good choices in this beach city. Yeah, Flossum isn't exactly Monte Carlo. Okay, let's see what I can dig up. Ew. No. Nope. Total yuck. Gross. Oh, here's Not one. Bad. Four out of five stars. Cozy, trendy cocktail bar and diner with sea-inspired small bites. This place looks hella cute. We are so going to Lagoon. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah! It's daytime. It's daytime. Next thing I know, we're there. I had no idea this place even existed, but apparently it's a hit with locals and tourists alike, and it's exactly how they describe themselves. Whoops, wrong button. The tables are illuminated by dimly lit candles, really making it intimate and adding to the cozy atmosphere. This is almost too trendy for my tastes. I really haven't been to anywhere this hip. In fact, I'm pretty sure the swankiest place I've eaten is the whole story. 
Even the way everyone is dressing here is so fashion forward. Retro 50s style without being hipster? Queen Bee fits right in with this bunch. She's always styled to perfection. I, on the other hand, I looked down at my hoodie and let out an exasperated sigh. <sighs> Don't worry about it, kid. You look fine. It's not exactly black tie. Dark Dashing, this is out tomorrow, right? Yes, it is. Yes, indeed. Next thing we know, we're in the hive. Oh, my. We'll be too busy paying attention to each other anyway for you to concern yourself over such trivial matters. Queen Bee locks arm with me and smiles. Look at us. Couple of hotties out for a night in the town. We should immortalize this with a selfie. Queen Bee pulls out her phone, holding it up high to get that perfect angle and snaps our picture. <laughs> oh, that's precious. Look. She passes her phone to me and surprisingly, it's a great photo. And I don't look half bad either. You cool if I post this on my social media feed? The beehive loves to know what I'm up to. And that's what I call my followers. And cute name, right? Only if you tag me in it. What's better than a cute picture of me and Queen Bee? A picture of me and Queen Bee getting posted to the world. It's almost like we're a real couple doing couple things. Go for it. Oh, and tag me so I can share it with my own hive too. <laughs> Don't you only have like 10 followers and six of them are all the regs from the fun flex? Yeah, but I really want to make sure Francine knows. <laughs> She'll be happy to know you're in good hands. Oh, the jacket changed. Two flower. Wee woo. Wee, wee woo, wee woo. The jacket changed back. You do realize you're probably going to get several hundred followers from this, right? I did have some inclination that that would happen, yes, but I'm not going to worry about my sudden jump in popularity. I won't be buying a solid gold mansion or anything. Going out and enjoying this moment with you is the only thing on my mind. You're making me blush, kid. And posted. I'd already silenced my phone, so if I suddenly go viral, it won't interrupt us. Although, poor Iris may get slammed by notifications. After a short wait, we are brought to our table. We sit down and menus are handed to us. I'm impressed that even the menus are super hip, down to the sophisticated font choice. Note to self, tell Juniper about the Lagoon's menus. So, what cocktail are you going to order? All of them sound divine and I'm having a hard time choosing. My eyes skim the menu, looking at the alcoholic choices. Funny enough, they're all named after boats. There's the catamaran, a citrusy grapefruit tequila libation. The banana boat, a rum and banana syrup concoction. The bow rider, a rosemary infused vermouth beverage. The caravel, a floral bubbly gin drink. Or the lifeboat, a non-alcoholic coconut lavender lemonade. It's a tough joy in choice indeed, but I think the one that will quench my thirst is the catamaran. Oh yeah, the citrus and tequila. Uh, count me in, please. They call me Mr. Margarita. They don't, but they should. So, you know, close enough. The tartness of the citrus accompanies the smoothness of the tequila, all topped with a lime salt rim. Tequila is the perfect booze for pre-dancing pre-game anyway. <laughs> Little Miss Demi, the banana boat. Hey, that's a purple banana. I wonder if they used purple bananas. The catamaran. It's a perfect reflection of our evening. It sounds pretty damn delicious. Just then, one of the wait staff passes by and Queen Bee gets their attention. Maybe we have two catamarans, please? As we wait for our drinks, I take notice of Queen Bee sitting across from me. The fake candlelight makes Queen Bee's skin glow and her eyes shine fiercely. I can't help but stare at her beauty. A honey tequila high for the queen, please. I like that. I like that, Koala Wings. You are absolutely gorgeous. The words fall uncontrollably from my mouth. Are you sure you didn't have a drink already without me? Oh, I'm sorry. I just... It's totally fine, Price. You are quite attractive yourself. Honestly, I'm quite smitten with you. I'm in complete shock. Words can't form in my mouth. I feel dizzy and my heart is pounding so hard I think it could just collapse at any second. This is what being in shock is like, right? Thankfully, our drinks are served to us, cutting a knife into my awkward silence. I quickly cut my hands around the glass and take a huge drink. Queen Bee laughs. Slow down there, Price. I'd like to still talk to you before you get completely trashed. It takes me a second to realize, but Queen Bee stopped calling me kid. I've leveled up from kid to my actual name, huh? What have I done to deserve this upgrade? I figured since we're on a date and I really do respect you, I owe that to you. Kid might slip out every now and again to habit, but it's price from here on out. You've earned it. It's beautiful how Queen Bee speaks my name, as if she's learning it for the first time. A fire sparks deep inside me and I feel tingles across my skin. I feel important, proud, a cut abo the, above the rest of the fodder. 
However, there is still something I yearn to know about Queen Bee, and I've been curious since we first met. A name for a name. So, you've got my name now. Yeah? What about it? When do I get to find out yours? Come again? Queen Bee is my name. I am Queen Bee. You know what I mean. But I hate my name. Okay, I won't make you. I understand some secrets are meant to say just that. Secret. Ugh. Screw it. It's fine. When you give me the sad puppy dog eyes, you force my hand. But if you tell anyone, and I mean anyone, you will have a very angry bee buzzing around you. My lips are mum. Queen Bee lets out an exasperated sigh. <sighs> it's Tonvi. Tonvi blanking Khan. But that's such a beautiful name. Why do you hate it? Mm. It's such an old-fashioned name, and no one can ever pronounce it correctly. Well, they can pronounce my family name, but they invariably do it like William Shatner in some blanking stupid attempt to charm me. Queen Bee's just easier. People can't screw it up. I can understand why you chose to go to Queen Bee, but it's not fun having a name no one can relate to. Plenty can understand the reference of Queen Bee. But I really do like your real name, too. If you'd like, I can refer to you by your real name instead of your gaming handle. Oh? That's very sweet of you, Price. Okay. You can call me Tonby or Queen Bee. Either way works fine by me. I'll respond to both. Both names fit her so well, but for me, one name rings true. I mean... Tonvi is a very cute name. And it is one of those things where it's like, there's a certain thing in relationships where when you have a name for a person that no one else uses and it's like really intimate like that, like that's super intimate. But also, Queen Bee is the name that she chose. And also, Queen Bee is like how I learned her name. So like, I think it makes sense to stick with Queen Bee because that's what like, what she would prefer. You know what I mean? Queen Bee is how I've always known her, and that's who I've fallen for. It seems weird to change it now. Queen Bee. I'm going to continue calling you Queen Bee. When you say it, I'm proud to be Queen Bee. I like it much better than when others call me by my handle. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. And thank you for not making fun of my name. I would never. I really adore you, Queen Bee. And I wouldn't poke fun at something that you care a ton about. You're the best. But look at our drinks. We need a round two. He was always quick to change the subject when things start to get too heavy, but still I gaze down to my glass and it's, in fact, empty. Second round is indeed in order, and maybe some food to go with? Yeah. Let's take a look at the menu. She takes a second to scan it. We should start with a round of oysters. I love eating those gooey little mollusks. So freaking delicious. You do know they're an aphrodisiac, don't you? I respond with my face turning deeply red and hiding it deep in the fold of my menu. Queen Bee laughs wildly and continues reading the menu, ignoring my embarrassment. We ended up ordering several small plates of some of the fanciest dishes I could even imagine. Buttered scallops on a bed of mashed parsnips, crab dumplings, roasted Brussels sprouts with bacon shavings, and lobster ravioli in a creamy of butter sauce. My mouth never tasted an explosion of such decadence, and my stomach was filled to the brim with savory and succulent food, and oh my god, I'm so hungry right now. The conversation stuck mostly to the beach adventures of present and past, and before long, the check came and went. It's official. I'm stuffed. Round one complete. Next up, we gotta dance off all these calories. Oh my god. Eating like a whole bunch of shellfish and seafood and stuff and then saying, hey, let's go dance a bunch. Oh. Oh. The dance club is right at the end of the boardwalk. A stone's throw away from the beach. How romantic. Right. I remember that being the main attraction for the night. Oh? I think you'll hold that title by the end of the night, Price. Is it getting hot in here all of a sudden? I'm not sure how much more of this I could take. Queen Bee is making very hard to concentrate on anything but my intense feelings for her right now. She just smiles wickedly at me, knowing exactly what she's doing. I'm gladly a pawn in Queen Bee's game. Okay, yeah, sure. You're right. Maybe we should go out dancing. Now. Right now. Right now. Now, right now. Called a taxi to get back to the boardwalk, and upon arrival at the dance hall, is already bumping. People are standing around outside, roped off in a queue. Everyone's wearing their best dancing attire. High heels, form-fitting dresses, button-up shirts, and fancy slacks. Before we go in, I can already hear the ns, 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 ns of the music. Not bad. I'm actually impressed. The nightlife here in Flotsam isn't half bad. You choose a good little beach town, Price. 
one of my favorite local DJs is playing here tonight. DJ Jazzy J! Oh! What? 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 She's got the hottest beats back in the city. How lucky is that that she's followed us out here? What? Drop some jazzies in chat, y'all. It's any jazzy you can find. It's jazz! Uh, extremely lucky. I honestly know nothing of the nightlife here, nor back at home. Clubs aren't really much my scene, but I'm willing to try anything to spend more time with Queen Bee. You're so cute when you're out of your element. Let's get to it. She locks her arm around mine, and I can feel my core temperature rise. I think I'm ready to face the dungeon of sweaty, beautiful people, but there is one slight problem. How long do you think this line will take? Oh, my sweet, innocent price. I don't wait in lines. Rule number one of life, nothing is worth waiting for. Take the initiative. You just gotta go out there and do it. B but but um, we can't just cut the line. That's illegal. We'll be like thrown in dance jail or something, right? Like we can't, that's against the rules. Don't think of it as cutting so much as advancing our own position. One more thing. What is it? I need you to muster all the confidence you have and look determined as hell. You belong here. You deserve this. Like this? I put on my best steadfast face and fill my mind with nothing but resolute thought. I belong here. I deserve this. Simple and utter perfection. Queen Bee leans in and kisses me on my cheek. Her lips are delicate yet compelling. Part of me wants to feel her kisses all over my body, right here and now. With a newly inspired confidence, Queen Bee leads me to the front of the queue. We approach the bouncer, the noble guardian of the club, the fabled checker of IDs. He lifts a hand up to us and we stop. Queen Bee simply holds out her card, smiling fiercely. Coat change, wee woo! Oh, I mean, I noticed the coat change. I just didn't want to point it out again. It is what it is supposed to be. Rip, he showed chat to YouTube. Oh no! Oh no, what happened? Wee woo! Wee woo! Oh, geez, they saw all the jazz symbols, I guess. Oh, no! How could that be? Oh, it's such a problem. Oh, okay, it's fine. Queen Bee simply holds out her card, smiling fiercely. We're with jazz. I can't help myself, but I'm holding my breath in anticipation. The bouncer checks the ID. Looks Queen Bee once over, then back at the ID, scrutinizing it with a grimace. Feels like forever. And I'm sure we're just going to uh, get got. We'll be the laughing stock of the club as everyone laughs at us while we trek away. Tears in our eyes. Shockingly, he gives us a gruff. <laughs> And waves us in. Oh. Okay. Be do be do be do. And the wings. I wait until we're above the good distance inside the building before I let myself show my true emotions. <gasps> I can't believe how did me what just I'm shouting over the booming mm's. It's pretty loud in here, but I think Queen Bee can hear me. She laughs accordingly. Relax, Price. Don't ask. Just accept how awesome we are. I nod dumbfoundedly. Before we get to dancing, let's get another drink. I look over at the bar area, and there is a big crowd. All those people vying for the attention of the barkeep, but most failing. Queen Bee pushes her way to the front of the mass of people, easily locks eyes with the bartenders. With a few motions of her hands and words, she surprisingly is headed back to me with a couple of drinks. I just got us their house cocktail. It was the easiest thing. I take the drink from her, and we find a place in the far corner of the club. It's out of the way of most of the people, and it's significantly more quiet over here. I take a sip of the cocktail. It's tasty. Not what I expected. Well, I don't actually know what I was expecting. But it's good. Queen Bee and I continue to take sips of our drinks and exchange provocative glances. We are a mess of smiles, giggles, and looking away sheepishly. The music and the crowd are still too loud for us to properly have a conversation, but we don't need words to communicate. Queen Bee smirks at me as she scoots in closer to me. She rubs her leg against my own. Delicately, she places a hand on my shoulder and leans over, talking into my ear. So, how are you holding up, Bryce? You don't look overtly traumatized. This is certainly one of the more exciting nights in recent history. Taking it all in, I'm feeling great. This is fantastic. I'm loving the party atmosphere and digging the tunes. The liquor is hitting me just right, and I'm ready to strut my stuff on the dance floor with Queen Bee. I'm so ready to get my dance on. Would you like to join me? You know it. But I'm waiting for the right song with the right beat to really go all out on the dance floor. As if on cue, Queen Bee crooks her head, catching the beat she's been waiting for. She jumps out of her seat, grabs a hold of my wrist, and leads me deep into the dancing crowd. People are jumping up and down, gyrating their hips, shaking one's booty. 
Queen Bee forces her way through several people, not even taking the time to notice his uh, squeeze through, too entranced by the music. But soon, the crowd noise falls away. My focus is entirely on Queen Bee, the beat, and the swaying of her hips. Once we make it into the inner circle of the crowd, we find a place on the floor that's not shoulder to shoulder, feeling the electrifying energy. We dance without hesitation. I may not know all the current club moves, but I don't let that stop me. Both Queen Bee and I are laughing and smiling and moving our bodies. As a particularly sick beat drops, Queen Bee and I lock eyes. She sways closer to me, swinging her hips alluringly. She closes in the distance between us, our bodies touching, rubbing up against one another. Outstretching her arms to the sky, she twirls her arms to the beat and I respond with bobbing my shoulders. Our eye contact doesn't break, and it's powerfully intense. I'm drawn in, and it's hard to let go. Eventually, the music stops. It's time for DJ Jazzy J to take a break. I'm sweaty and sticky and smiling from all the fun we've had. Queen Bee winks at me. Would you like to go somewhere more secluded? Shall we take this outside? I'd like that very much. Oh my, y'all. We wave goodbye and good riddance to the loud music and the party lifestyle. What greets us is the serene sounds of the ocean, the soft cry of the waves clashing atop the sand, the delicate song of the breeze as it gently nips at our skin, the silence of the stars. Queen Bee clings onto my arm and we walk along the shore. For several minutes, we say nothing, step by step, just enjoying the quietness of each other. We walk off the tipsiness from the drinks, the bebop of the club, the, ankle, the, the ache in our muscles from the day. We disregard it all. In this moment, it's me and Queen Bee. I wouldn't have it any other way. Queen Bee leans gently into me and lays her head against my shoulder. Price, ever since I've known you, you've treated me with respect. Of course I respect you, Queen Bee. I mean, like, you treat me like an actual real person. So many people treat me as if I'm some celebrity and just try to woo me for their own pride. Others just blatantly troll me because I'm a woman. I just want to be treated, you know, well, like most people want to be treated. And you do, Price, so thank you. Once again, I can feel my heart quicken and my cheeks flush. The mood is perfect, and I just want to be even closer to Queen Bee. I turn to face her, taking her hands in mine, our fingers intertwined, and I look her in the eyes. You're the best, Queen Bee. Queen Bee blushes and looks away hesitantly. I mean it. You truly are a queen among the rest. She looks back at me with a wild look in her eyes and a smirk on her lips. I can read her body language, and it's contagious. No words are needed to convey our desire as we both dive in. Queen Bee grabs at my clothes and pulls me in close. Finally, our lips meet. Pent up passion from months of wanting and waiting. My arms glide down her back as I embrace her, longing to feel her body up next to mine. Our kisses are a mix of delicate touches and forceful caresses, our lips only parting to make intense eye contact before delving right back in. Our carnality is fierce, nothing keeping us apart. I litter kisses along her collarbone as I squeeze her hips. She nips on my neck, her hands grasping desperately on my back. Each of us take turn, leading the other in thirsty display of affection. My mind is a blur, and all I can think of this wonderful woman in front of me. It's heating up, but in a turn of events, Queen Bee slows it down with a deliciously long kiss. Our lips linger until finally she parts from me, letting a heavy sigh fall from her mouth. Can I ask you something important? Of course. Can we just stay like this? What do you mean? Like, stuck in this position forever? I'm sure eventually I would need to use my arm again. It helps me do things like write, cook, gaming. Queen Bee laughs slightly. <laughs> I mean, metaphysically. Here in our current situation. Like, we obviously are attracted to each other, but I'm not ready to jump into a typical relationship role of being partners. That's not exactly what I was expecting Queen Bee to ask. Ian. Frankly, I'm not quite sure how to take it. We can stay exactly like this. Who needs rigid uh, rules about relationships, y'all? Whatever works, works. That's what I say. If you're happy, if everyone involved is happy, you just go with it. Exactly, Demi, you just go with it. We can say it like this. I'm cool with it. What would I be if I forced Queen Bee into a situation she wasn't ready for? I'm content just being able to have these wonderful moments to share with her. If continue what we're doing brings you happiness, and let's keep doing exactly what we're doing. Thank you, Price. Thank you so much for understanding. 
it's not that I don't want to be together with you. I do. I cherish you and I love you all the time we spend together. I'm just not ready for the label of being in a relationship or partner. I'm more in the mindset. I'm going to take it one step at a time. Enjoy our time together and see how that blossoms. Ah, so is this more of a casual fling? No, not at all. I'm still dedicated to you. The only person I care for. I just want to take it slowly. Have an open communication about what we're doing and not put a label on it. We have a seat by the waves to put my thoughts together. OMG! I'm just gonna let's just let's just sit here. She looks like a glorious mermaid. And I look like an adorable anime boy. My goodness. My goodness, y'all. I think I get it. Everything is still going to be the same. We're going at a slower pace. Not going around saying, so-and-so is my partner. Exactly. I've been hurt by too many people in the past, and right now, I don't want to screw anything up going into this new experience with you. <sighs> Pardon my ambiguity in the matter. This is just what feels right in the moment. I, I understand about being hurt in the past, and if this is what you need, I want to be the one by your side during this time. One quick other question. Shoot. If I'm not calling you my partner, what should I call you? Queen B. You may call me my queen, of course. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Yes, my queen. Queen B throws her head back and laughs, breaking up the seriousness of the conversation. Something tells me she's only half joking and half being serious, and I can't help but laugh along but seriously, too. Seriously, whatever feels comfortable. The person I spend my time with romantically, physically, and emotionally works. Well, there you go. We can reevaluate things as they continue to grow and as we continue to change. Queen Bee smiles warmly at me, and I smile back. She's so brave to talk openly about her feelings, and it makes me appreciate this moment even more. Now, where were we before I interrupted our carnal conversation with words? Oh, carnal conversation. I rest my hand on Queen Bee's cheek and kiss her gently. Right here. She leans into me, kissing me back, the tension beginning to mount again. We spend the rest of the night entangled in each other's arms. And that's how Queen Bee and I found each other. I'd called our lunchtime party the high watermark. One perfect moment in time, but I was wrong. This was it. And in the difficult weeks ahead, I'd cling to that high watermark in hopes the wave would roll my way again. Level five complete, y'all! Woo woo! Bing, bing, bing! How adorable was that scene? Oh my goodness. So far, you've scored 19,450 points. You're winning friends and influencing people. Do you want to save your game before proceeding to level six? Yes, I do, because this is going to be where we're going to end this stream, this recording, this everything. So people of YouTube, I hope you enjoyed seeing the fruits of our labor come to bear in this relationship that we had. What a wonderful moment, but there's still more to go, right? There's eight chapters, right? We got some time, y'all. So with that, YouTube, I would like to say goodbye to y'all. Thank you so much for being here. Like, favorite, subscribe, all that jazz. We'll see you next time.